up guys good morning it is october the 30th and uh we are so, gonna go do our best try to turn up this deer we gave it a pretty good effort last night and decided to stop and kind of back out after we bumped that buck come back in the morning when we've got a lot better light and hopefully some additional time so that deer can expire we're definitely down but we're not out so we're gonna stay positive until we exhaust all of our options it's the only thing that you can do just like last night we got an awesome group of guys to try to help it out and uh man what a what a way to end this trip if we can just get one little stroke of luck and turn this bad boy up obviously we kind of talked a lot about it last night but this is truly the reality of hunting and we made a decision a long time ago as a group that we were going to show situations like this it could be pretty easy to admit this from our footage and decide ah, eh, we'll just skip that part but that's not why we set this channel up you know we want to have a chance to show people the ups and the downs and unfortunately the downs are real they're there they happen i think it happens more than people might think it just doesn't get talked about as much and it doesn't get shown as much and so uh that's what we decided to do that's what we're gonna do and this is this is real we're uh on day two of a blood trail after a long hunt with a lot of effort and uh we're just hoping that we can finish it and find it Turn the water out on the North 40. <laughs> Went from irrigating to river dancing real quick. Bone zone, round town. That's Sick for it. Dom, he was walking that tree line. So we kind of lost blood. We did lose blood. We haven't seen blood since where we left the hat last night. And so we kind of got all this spread out, started looking. Maybe I should have waited for Brian, but I came up, I went to the river. I'm like, man, herd animals, for some reason, go to water. And sure enough, he was bedded right on the river. And I tried to slowly sink down underneath the brush, and he blew out. But there's blood in his bed, and there's blood going out of his bed. So he's still bleeding, which goes back to one of my theories is these are broadheads are so razor sharp that it's a perfect cut wherever you shoot them at and if it's an organ I've seen this is happening to me with elk when those animals go and lay down it almost that wounds open but when they lay down it kind of like goes back together and they don't bleed and a lot of times I've uh, had long blood trails where it's not until I've jumped them out of their first or second bed that reopens that hole up again and then they die but that deer came out of his bed looking pretty good shape but there's blood in his bed and going out of his bed. I was pretty convinced it wasn't him until I got to his bed and I saw blood. So he popped out of there pretty clean. Well, he, well, he allowed me to get 10 yards, yeah, so it tells me like he was trying. He didn't want to get saw up. You a while. Okay. He poked his head up like that, and I was like, oh shoot. And then he blew out pretty quick. Nice. He might be that close. I don't know. Let's go another 100 yards, yeah. Meh. 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 
Once he got up, man, we got a lot more blood. Just opening that wound up. We think he bedded down another 80 yards away. We're gonna give him 20 minutes for that. Brian try to sneak in there and kill him. I think he's gonna need another arrow, though. He's not just gonna die from that first one. Well guys, that is um, it's an unfortunate end to a big roller coaster. We were literally this close to getting a follow-up shot on him this morning and just could not find a window through all this thick brush. I mean he was freaking, he was right there. We saw him one other time at 80 yards through the trees and he just was walking away and um, that was it, no more blood couldn't find where he went and got really really thick back in here <sighs> breaks my heart it, it truly breaks my heart and I don't care about the fact that I'm not walking away with the deer but I care more about the fact that that deer is uh, suffering and although like Casey said last night the goal here no sugarcoating it is to kill an animal I don't want him to suffer and uh, that's the part that sucks the most. You always replay like the situation in your head, what I could have done differently, what I should have done. I'm a pretty patient person, and I think I pass up a lot of shot opportunities that other hunters might take, because I want to be, I want to be good, I want to execute, I want to be ethical. But even, even then, things happen. Last night, in retrospect, re re reviewing the footage, you know, when he, when he was like on a little run and I stopped him, instead of just stopping broadside and turning his head, he actually kind of ended up whirling, and that additional quarter shot is really what screwed me up. And in the heat of the moment, I just didn't even calculate that that's what took place. Had I rethought that, I would have re-anchored into a different zone, or maybe I would have even passed. But the only thing we can do is walk away saying we did everything we could do. We looked last night and then we made a good decision to back out, which was super smart because this morning when Casey bumped him out of his bed, um, he wasn't too far from the last place we quit. We came back this morning, tried again, and it took a while to kind of relocate where the heck it was at. We lost blood for probably 45 minutes before Casey just stumbled into him. And then we were on him, we are like, man, it's going to happen. Like, he, he, We knew where he went, and we walked up on him to within 20 yards. And he was in a big thicket. I got to full draw, just there was no shot. And by the time I had an opening, he was gone in the other direction. I thought it was going to happen today, but the roller coaster of bow hunting did not prevail in our favor, which is... Uh, Hard to hard to swallow as a hunter, but for me, I've got six hours to feel sorry for myself and think through some things and get over it, and then I got to uh, get to Missouri and do this all over again in a different state. So comes with the territory. You got to just forget about some things and get your head right and be ready to execute the shot in your next hunt whether that's the next day or 
you know, the next month. We owe it to ourselves and we owe it to all the animals we're chasing to learn from these things and just try to get better. But like I said earlier, guys, this is real. This is, this is a real situation that we chose to show you because hopefully you guys can relate to it. You can learn from it. We're not perfect. We're not professional hunters. We're not, we don't think we're better than anybody. We're just a couple, three average guys that love filming this stuff. We love sharing this stuff. We love experiencing these new hunts. And um, because of that, we choose to just show all the stuff, even when it sucks. But I'm fortunate to have a great group of guys around me to help. Doing this by myself would have been super difficult to figure out the blood trail, to even get another opportunity. And, um, man, I don't know. This is unfortunately the low side of honey, but there will be better days. There will be better days. Well, what is up guys? Buzzed it off. My beard was getting long. I didn't vlog today earlier because I didn't have my vlog camera. I left it in Kansas. Hopefully Logan got that for me. Today is what, the 30th, October 30th. Tomorrow's the last day of the rifle hunt. I have a tag and so does my girlfriend Bridget. So we're gonna go out for one day, one last day to the exact same spot that Ken and I hunted. So if you guys have been watching these videos, you watched, uh, what, a week and a half ago? Ken and I were in Idaho. I think we hunted five days, never turned up a decent buck. So we didn't shoot anything. And my mind is just blown that we weren't able to turn up a, a half decent mature buck. And because of that, uh, I've said this before, like, man, I feel like the mountain conquered us. It kicked our butt. There's tons of people. We never turned up a big buck. So now I must go back. I must go back to see if I can find a big buck and put this tag to rest whether I shoot a deer or not, but at least give it my all. We all came home today, but I came home extra early just to get things ready. So all I'm taking is like one day's worth, four-wheeler, a rifle, and a backpack full of everything I need, spotting scope, tripod, camera, etc. Bridget has, she hasn't harvested anything this year. She still has a whitetail hunt, but because of that, she wants to go shoot almost any buck. So the goal is to get her a buck. I will be kind of holding out. That's what's up here in Salt Lake. The weather tomorrow is what I'm most excited about. It drops big time. It cools down to like the high of 49. I think with that and some cloud cover, there should, the deer should be moving. I'm feeling pretty confident I could turn up a mature buck. But yeah, I just want to give you guys a quick update. I have not heard personally myself from BMAC or Casey. I have a bad feeling that they didn't find that buck. Again, I don't know. I hope they found that buck. The last I heard was they jumped him. It's always easier when you're not the hunter. This year, if you guys watched the first few days of this whole thing, I shot a buck with my bow at High Country Deer Camp in my tree stand, and I was a wreck for two weeks. Well, we were headed for home. Brian dropped us off at the airport in uh, Kansas, or in Denver now, and I don't know where Logue's going, but- Oh, later. you don't wanna ride the thing? Right here. Anyway, we're gonna get home later tonight, about eight, and then we're gonna get a spin four or five days with the family, and then headed to Colorado for our last hunt of the year. But me and Logan have a lot of editing to do in the next four or five days. Just put up the new video today. The first video, episode one, went up today. We have about 85 more of them to put up, so we gotta get editing. Oh, well, y'all, it has been one long day. Been uh, on the road after I dropped Casey and Logan off at the airport in Kansas, and I'm now in Missouri. Anybody from Missouri watching this video? If you are, I'm at a Casey's. It's a little store, gas station. Making the final push, uh, I think I've got like 45 minutes left in my drive before I connect with the gentleman at the hunting public. If you enjoy whitetail hunting, turkey hunting, you will love these guys. I'm super excited to switch things up and uh, try a different technique to get after the whitetails. I obviously got the itch in Kansas. I'm really excited to have that one experience obviously super bummed on the the outcome of it but during the drive it talks to some good friends some family got my head cleared I'm in a good place and just got to get back on it so gonna be meeting up with these fellas during the middle of what they call their deer tour they spent a lot of time throughout Missouri and Iowa Wisconsin Kentucky chasing whitetails they do a lot of public land whitetail hunting which uh, I'm very excited to kind of give that a go there's not a ton of public land in Missouri but they do have some spots I think we're gonna be hunting. And from what I know, their style is gonna be kind of like carrying the stand on your pack. 
uh, moving, putting up a place based on some of the scouting they've been doing. So I'm excited to get to the cabin where we're staying, introduce you guys to the hunting public officially, and let them tell us a little bit more about what to expect in the next couple days. I'm gonna be here on Halloween, November 1st, November 2nd, the morning of November 3rd, and then I'm heading back to go meet up with the fellas to close out this unbelievable season we've had so far in Colorado on one of our favorite hunts. I'm really pumped to try to get a few more whitetail opportunities. Regardless if I punch a tag, I just wanna see more deer action in the tree stand. The ruddy behavior, whether that be using the rattling antlers or grunting them in, or just seeing them cruising, just to kind of like, again, get that Midwest whitetail experience. That's what I'm chasing the most. Second would be learning as much about their strategy. Like how are they approaching these different pieces of public land? What are they looking for? And maybe pass along some information to those of you that have wanted to try that. And then, uh, you know, just meet another great group of guys that share common interests and are trying to do the same thing we're doing. Just kind of in a little bit of a different space. So the whitetail turkey Midwest world of YouTube is a wide open space that Casey and Eric and I said three or four years ago, whoever does kind of similar to what we're doing in that zone, like that being their specialty, we think would do really, really well. Aaron and the crew, all the rest of the guys that are kind of underneath the hunting public umbrella, they are doing exactly that. They are crushing it with their turkey tour, their deer tour, and I think the sky's the limit for these guys and just can't wait to get to know them a little bit better and get to see what their program's all about. We'll see you at deer camp. How's it going, dude? Pretty good. The left-handed shake. Yeah. What's up, guys? Jake, <laughs> Jake Brian, how are you? Ted. Ted, how are you? Good, how are Pleasure. you? Pleasure. This is the hunting public, guys. We're in Missouri. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. It's always weird when you drive into a place and there is a uh, like you have no concept of where you're at it's totally pitch black <laughs> dude i saw you pull in down there and yeah uh, i'm like okay dirt road i think this is it but you never know you don't know if you're gonna pull up to a shack or uh... yes because i have done that before in the middle of montana <laughs> that's usually our typical yeah. that's our typical run like anyways we made it state. this is deer camp right yeah, yeah this is it i'm excited the uh public land whitetail killers that's this crew right here <laughs> We'll think, see. Uh, yeah, we'll find out about that this week. <laughs> well, I know one thing. I'm going to learn a heck of a lot about a different way to, to chase whitetails based on what we just experienced in Kansas, and that's what I'm most excited about. Plus, get to know all you guys. Tomorrow is going to be, tomorrow and Thursday going to be the days. Yeah. Halloween. I mean, didn't, me saying this is going to completely <laughs> jinx us. <laughs> but It didn't last year. No. Halloween, you said God, earlier, is Halloween the and, that you like. And like it's, Halloween's good for everybody everywhere, but for whatever reason, in Missouri, like my entire life, really? somebody's killed one Man, on Halloween. That's cool. Like, or multiple people have killed one. And I think every time that I've hunted on Halloween in Missouri, I've seen a mature buck. I'm a white cell novice, so <laughs> don't expect much. I had my very first ever like white tail ruddy encounter last night, and it was awesome. What'd yeah. you say? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it was absolutely awesome because it was close to 60 hours of sitting and not dealing <laughs> yeah. with any like. Couple of those, a couple of small little bucks, but <coughs> you're probably not used to sitting this still. Probably. No, but it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I would much rather hike like 10 miles in the backcountry of Montana. <laughs> yeah. All of us were wiped out. I don't know yeah. what it is, but Mentally, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. just like a different kind of uh, thing you go through when you're whitetail hunting. But it just kept like for me, like learning more about the strategy mm -hmm. of it and just trying to like outwit these deer that are on such edge comparatively to, like the mule deer we hunt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, a couple of the does that came in last night were just so sketchy. Be an amateur and get one to like come in with a little rattle grunt session last night and then get, have to kind of work him to get him to commit. Right. Yeah. And then finally have an opportunity was the coolest part of the whole trip. Mm -hmm. So I just want to see more like deer while uh, we stand. We should. <laughs> That's the cool I'm thing hoping. to me. Yeah. Being able to watch them and have that interaction with them is pretty cool pretty awesome what do you guys are classified as like a shooter like what do you look for more age Everywhere or just size depends or? like down it's different up there definitely than yeah up here. yeah like anything with four points pretty much here is i mean yeah I four, speaking yeah. for you we're in a county where we got a four point restriction on one side so he's got to have at least four you know he can be an eight pointer with a side broken and he's legal but he's got to have four on one side you know if i if i was only going to have three or four days mm -hmm. to hunt this area 
these would be the days, the next few days, especially with the way that this weather's lining up and everything. Yeah. You got a safety harness or no? No. I got one for you. Yeah, <laughs> do the tag. That was an interesting one. Did you get it? I got it all figured out, but they make you like send a photo of your hunter's uh, safety card in for proof mm -hmm. before they'll let you buy the permit. Luckily, I had it with me <laughs> from 1987. <laughs> so we got it squared away, downloaded the app, which that's super convenient. Yeah, yeah. Missouri's got that figured out. Mm -hmm. The yeah. fact that you can notch a tag electronically is awesome. You can notch it right there on your phone, yeah. and then you can telecheck it right there. Right. But when you notch it, it gives you like a few hours. It says, okay, you have to telecheck by okay. this time, yeah. and, and then you just telecheck it right then and there. You that just is fill awesome. it out, and you're done. <laughs> My uh, poverty uh, rattling antlers that nice. I had to tape up because I kept banging my thumb. Oh, yeah. Probably on their way right now. Several good crossing scrapes, rubs, where bucks are going from this block to this block. And I'm anticipating the same thing to be occurring right here on this other ditch to the east. Yeah. Except this is an even shallower ditch with more bedding cover in it. So with the northerly wind, we're blowing the wind right back down the way that we're coming in on both. And any bucks that are coming in from up this direction are going to come through that little pinch in the morning. Vice versa over here. It's hard to tell, but a lot of this stuff down along the edge of that water in that creek is just nasty waste of chest high horse weeds and couple burrs and stuff. And that's where they they love that. It's just so thick. It's thick. Yeah. It's really thick. You know, lots of cedars with mixed hardwoods in and around there and then CRP on top and tall switchgrass fields. So basically my plan was we'll go one here, then we'll go one here, drop off and go up in there. And if we get in there and we don't like what we're seeing, we'll come back out and we'll either post up observation on the top of this hill where we can see clear across that field and call to something or we'll go straight up to that little road funnel in between those two fields. We always bring calls, but we usually don't blind call a ton okay. on public. I mean, yeah. If you, what tends to happen with mature bucks is they're going to come down, get downwind of you. As soon as they hear something, they're going downwind. You know, unless you got a decoy or unless you have a barrier in which they can't get downwind. But yeah, I mean, could set up in this timber along the south edge and see all the way across that thick, gnarly field. Well, here's the gear dump. Walk me through what we're working with here, Aaron. Help help us Westerners understand what we are actually going to do tomorrow. Well, we're going to put on a bunch of... Uh, Show me diapers. Diapers? <laughs> 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 we're going to use some like rock climbing gear, basically, to climb up in the tree and then get wild. So and give, sit there give me, give me the day. basic 101 of what your program is that might be a little bit different than if we were hunting private ground on a stand that's just permanently hung. All right, so VMAX is gonna have the stand right here. And Ted's just got some old army surplus straps on it. This is uh, one of Lone Wolf's smaller models. And you got, you know, tree arm and base, strap on bow hanger, safe line here. And this is also just a pull up rope, whatever. So he's gonna wear this in. And I'm gonna put on my tree saddle harness. This is the diaper thing we were talking about, but it's really sweet actually. And this is new to, you know, the deer hunting world here recently. You just put this baby on, and then I pack a backpack with some climbing sticks in it, and it comes with a little bitty platform that's about the size of this tree stand seat that mounts to the tree. And then I hang off the tree and basically stand on that platform with that tree saddle. And that supports my weight. I just sit there all day and hopefully film bucks get shot, right? It's just that easy, guys. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be a totally different experience. What's our wake up time tomorrow? Oh, I mean, 20 minutes from now, maybe? Okay, so all of this is gonna go in on the back. We're gonna slide in via a boat, right? Yep. Gonna use a boat. We're probably getting up at three-ish. Three-ish. That's <laughs> because it takes 12 hours to erect the mobile tree stand <laughs> unit. <laughs> so yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is gonna be a new adventure. And the plan tomorrow, because it's Halloween and it's your favorite day in the world to hunt, is we're hanging out there. We're probably gonna be in the woods most of the day. Most of the day, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna be out there all morning and depends on the action that we're having, but that's one reason why we use hang and hunt method. Whether we're hunting public or private for whitetails, like you're either in the action or you're not, and if we're not in it in the morning, we will pull everything down and head back to the boat and move on to the next spot. And then just rehang again, because at Halloween you could kill one 
you know, 30 minutes in in the morning or you could shoot one at 12.05. We like being mobile so that we can bounce around and go where the deer are instead of waiting for them to come to us so much. Okay, so being mobile has a lot of similarities to being mobile, uh, like we did on our Montana hunt with Born and Race, right? Our camps were on our back and we just went and we could go try to find the elk versus trying to only go to one spot and hoping the elk are there. So kind of a same similar program, uh, but just like with a, a whitetail twist. The, uh, the other unique thing this crew does is their setup location. So for those of you, again, that haven't followed the hunting public and you love whitetail hunting, you do yourself a favor, you'll learn a lot, I promise you, and you'll love their videos. But give me a rundown real quick of your strategy on stand setup. Oh, uh, like where we set up? Yeah, where? That might be different than the, the average whitetail hunter that's out there. Well, most of the time we're setting up over buck beds or we're looking for buck bedding, wouldn't you say? And or we believe they're going to be better at least. What? Or we believe they're going to be better at least. Right, where we believe they're going to be bedded. Some areas are there are places that we've pre-scouted that we already know that bucks like to use every year and like to bed in, but more often than not we're just looking at maps aerial photos and stuff and we're trying to determine the most likely place for a mature buck to live and mature bucks are not the same as the rest of the deer like they are a completely different animal almost than does and young bucks they just don't act the same they don't bed the same they don't behave the same you know and once you start to realize that your tactics begin to change a lot if that's what you're after so well, i guess long-winded answer we're trying to set up as close as we possibly can to mature buck bedding areas. And sometimes that's within a hundred yards of where that buck is bedding. Like in the morning, for example, I would expect if there's a mature buck in this area we're going, for him to already be, be in the bedding area at daylight before we even get there. And most of the time you're thinking, well, I'm gonna get in the bedding area and I'm gonna catch all these deer coming back. That's what most people think. Well, more times than not, he's already in there an hour before shooting light. And what you're doing is you're just trying to get in there with him without him noticing. And then mid morning when he gets up to run scrapes along the perimeter of his bedding area, you're sitting there waiting on him. How about that little nugget of whitetail knowledge? <laughs> uh, that's why you're gonna wanna follow this program along. This is gonna be a way different hunt than what we experienced in Kansas. And I think uh, that's gonna be half of the fun is trying something totally new, totally different. I'm gonna be a giant liability when it comes to assembling carrying and packing around a tree stand. I know that for a fact, so nah, right. already pre-warned everybody. He's used to um, me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what's gonna be cool. So this is gonna be uh, do-it-yourself, public land, Missouri, whitetail hunting. It's gonna be a good day. Although I'm gonna be tired, I can already tell you that. <laughs> yeah. With a 3.30 wake up call. I can guarantee you we have not woken up as a team so far this year at 3.30 a.m. We like to call it swing shift. Uh, particularly when we're hunting elk with Born and Raised crew. Killed a lot of elk between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. That later that later hours of the day always works for us, which is cool if you like to sleep in. <laughs> I noticed that one video, Casey's like, Trent can't get Casey to wake up. Yeah. And like, you guys try waking him up like 10 different times. That is a fact. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, thank you for watching the video tonight. We will see you tomorrow on Halloween, live from Missouri. Eric will be live from Idaho. Casey will be back home with Logan, getting everything edited up. But appreciate you following along, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.